At some point in life, you've probably asked yourself, how do I make a copy of a simple plastic part? Let's say a knob like this for a piece of equipment that you're building. How do I make a bunch of these? I'm gonna take you through my process for making a two-part silicone mold of this violin chin rest. And I'm gonna show you how you can make a resin copy of just about anything. This is a random violin chin rest that they apparently don't make anymore. This is a pre-made wooden mold box. And these are gonna be the bases that the violin chin rest is connected to inside the mold box. I'm gonna scan the chin rest on my flatbed scanner. This is gonna give me the location of the standoffs on the bottom of the chin rest. I'm going to copy the location of those standoffs and I'm going to cut a paper pattern with my laser of the exact location of those standoffs. This is going to allow me to cut a template of the location of those standoffs. With this template, I'm going to be able to locate those standoffs on the base plates that I just cut so that I can place them inside of the mold box in the correct location. Let's trace them so that we can drill out the holes on the drill press. Here I'm drilling an eight and a half millimeter and a 10 and a half millimeter hole so that I can drop the chin rest into the perfect location on the base plates. Next, I have to make some plugs that are gonna plug the through holes on the chin rest so that the silicone cannot go all the way through the part when we cast the first side. Now I'm gonna use the laser to cut some spacers. These are gonna go on the back side of the chin rest to give me some additional space for the injection sprue. Yes, I know this is a little confusing, but stick with me. It'll all make sense when we cast the second part of the silicone mold. I'm gonna use a little bit of white glue. Yes, the same stuff you used in grade school to glue the cardboard together. It's cheap, effective, and readily available. I'm gonna bust out the shellac. Yes, this is my favorite sealer. It's not water soluble and works great on wood and fiber products like cardboard because it creates a nice seal for the silicone to set up against. Let's use some more of that white PVA school glue to glue our part down. It's a non-destructive glue, easily removable, but just strong enough to hold the part in place during the casting process. Let's take those spacers and glue those down to our base as well in the back of the chin rest. Let's apply a little bit more shellac to the cardboard spacers so we can seal those up as well. I'm applying some of Chavant's non-sulfur based modeling clay here. And this is to seal up the gap between the part and the spacers in the back. I heat the clay up so that it becomes soft and pliable and I can easily form it. Once it's cooled, I can go back with some simple wooden and plastic tools and carve it and sculpt it into the shape that I want. I need to get a really nice clean edge along the part so that I can get a good parting line in my mold later on. It's important that you use a non-sulfur based clay so that the silicone can cure inside the mold. The last thing you want is to do all this work and then not have your silicone set up because it's having problems against the clay. The nice thing about this clay is that you can use mineral spirits to clean it, meaning I can use a Q-tip and some mineral spirits to clean up and get a really nice edge against the clay and then polish the part and we're almost ready to put it inside of our mold box. I remove one side of the mold box and I put in my two spacers that are the base for my part to make sure that they fit. One of the last things we need to do before we pour our silicone is to make a registration key. This allows the two halves of the mold to go back together in exactly the same way and line up perfectly every single time. 
Again, I'm gonna cut some cardboard and glue them down with some simple white glue, and this becomes our keyway registration. I'm gonna seal it with some shellac, take it back out so I have some better access, put it back in the mold, and screw it together. Using basic math that everybody learned in high school, we can calculate the volume of this cavity minus 100 milliliters for the part on the inside. That gives us roughly 400 milliliters. Since silicone is pretty close to the specific gravity of water, I can just measure out about 400 milliliters of silicone, and that should be enough to fill the space in the mold box. I've added the catalyst to my Silicone Inks GI 1040, and I mix thoroughly. Once it's mixed, I placed it in my vacuum chamber to remove the air bubbles. This takes roughly 20 minutes. Notice I'm using a very large container. This creates a nice large surface area and allows the silicone to degas much easier than in a smaller container. Once I see that there are very few bubbles emerging from the silicone mixture, it's time to remove it from the vacuum tank. I like to use a vibration table to help me vibrate the part very gently while I pour in the silicone. This allows any air bubbles that are still trapped inside the silicone mixture or that develop from the pouring process to rise to the surface. Bubbles are your enemy when you're pouring silicone. The vibration table stays active on a very low setting during the entire pour so that the bubbles can rise, but yet it won't shake the part free from the base inside the mold box. 12 hours later and the silicone has cured. Let's remove the base from the silicone mold. It's not always possible to do this inside the mold box, and in this case, I have to disassemble everything. This is not ideal, but in this case, it was unavoidable. Let's remove the keyway and the master part. I need to put a little bit of dishwashing detergent on these little silicone sprues so that I can get the part to fit snugly back inside the mold. I remove and cut off these excess little pieces on the bottom of the mold so that I can lay flat inside the mold box and reassemble the mold box with the silicone part and the master part. It's of vital importance that you add a release agent to the silicone that is visible. Because if you don't, the next half of the silicone mold that you pour will stick right to it. You only want to place your release agent on the silicone, not on the part. In this case, my release agent was naphtha and Vaseline. The Vaseline thinned out with the naphtha. This part has brass threaded inserts. We need to seal them so that we don't cast those threads. In the final part, you'll have to drill those holes out and insert new threaded inserts manually. The green part is the injection sprue and the copper wires are my vents. We're gonna use some super glue to glue everything onto the part. I'll apply some kicker with a brush, dip the end of the wire into a puddle of super glue, and then place it where I want. I want the vents to be in the high spots, and I want the injection sprue to be in the low spot. This way, when we inject our resin into the mold, we'll be at the lowest spot. It will force the air out the top and through the vents and we shouldn't have any air bubbles in our part. It's time for more math so you can calculate the volume and the amount of silicone that is needed. Add the appropriate amount of catalyst, mix thoroughly, and place in your vacuum tank to degas. Again, we're gonna use the vibration table and we're gonna pour our silicone. Notice when I pour the silicone, I pour it in one spot. This allows the silicone to flow out and not have any air bubbles trapped in between the part and the silicone. Bubbles are your enemy when you're pouring silicone. 
Let's take the finished mold out of the mold box. It's time to reveal your two-part silicone mold. I need to make black parts. The best way to make a black part is to use clear resin. That way your pigment does not have to overcome the opaqueness or whatever color the natural color of the resin is. I'm using a water clear resin here from BJB Enterprises and I'll leave a link below in the description to BJB's website where you can get some of their water clear. Into the vacuum tank it goes so we can degas the resin and make our part. I'm gonna let gravity do the work. Since our poor sprue is at the low point and our vents are at the high point, gravity will do all the work here. I cut off a syringe and use that as a makeshift funnel. You'll see the resin start to weep out of the vent holes. Into the pressure tank it goes and it cures at 60 PSI so that if there are any bubbles in there, they get crushed down and you get a perfect part. All that remains is to remove the part from the silicone mold. You now have all the information that you need to make a copy of any sort of a simple molded part. I, on the other hand, will have to spend many hours over the next few days making the rest of the parts to complete this order. Feel free to leave a comment below and let me know if you like this video. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below and on the channel page. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.